inflation, the first order idea is that, well, it's, it's a natural consequence of Einstein's equations that if there is a vacuum energy density, there are all kinds of energy densities. There's energy density of radiation, there's energy density of protons, you know, amount of energy, amount of mass per unit volume in space. There's another one which Einstein himself invented mathematically, which he called the, math, uh, the, uh, the cosmological constant, except he said it in German. And it's just an energy which is there in empty space. It's called the cosmological constant or the vacuum energy or dark energy in a more popular um, version of it. It's just there. If the universe expands, it doesn't dilute. It's just there. It's, it's, it's always there. As a consequence of that possibility, Einstein realized there was a consequence of a certain kind of universe, which by that time was called the sitter space, which was this exponentially expanding thing. It's just a solution of Einstein's equations in the presence of a vacuum energy. We could write down the equations. I could solve them for you. You would see that it leads to exponential expansion. You'll have to take my word for it. OK, so there we are. If that energy density is there, exponential expansion. Einstein knew it and hated it. And he immediately said, that was my worst mistake ever. The famous quote of Einstein, my, my worst mistake. Incidentally, Einstein made many mistakes. That's one of, the, one of the reasons he's such a hero of mine, that he was not afraid to make mistakes. People who are afraid to make mistakes, uh, they're not, they're not uh, good at this subject. Einstein said that was my worst mistake. It wasn't. It may have been one of his most profound insights, but it took, I don't know, 50 years, 70 years? I'm not, I have to think about how long it took uh, for observational cosmology, astronomy in another language, to catch up with Einstein's cosmological constant and demonstrate empirically that it exists. So, OK, but that's not inflation is an earlier version of that. Inflation is a, a, a version of that exponential expansion which took place very early. You should keep in mind, when people talk about exponential expansions, they're talking about two things. The exponential expansion taking place today, which is very slow, and the exponential expansion which took place early on, which was this very, very rapid inflation. So that's what inflation is, exponential expansion in the very early universe. It's connected with this vacuum energy, but then there are different explanations of what the vacuum energy is. Some people think it has to do with a field, a field called the inflaton, which is a good idea. I'm not dismissing it. I think it's the right idea. A field which, as it varies, changes the vacuum energy, and some varying field which creates this energy density. As this field evolves, the vacuum energy density changes a little bit, but different regions of space will sample different values of this field. And therefore, different regions of space will expand at different rates. What people like Andre figured out is in this expanding universe, there will always be these different regions, and there will always be regions which are inflating rapidly. So the, no matter what you do, you may look for a theory in which the inflation just ends, but it won't end. It will keep going on in different places, and the result will be this bubbling, nucleating uh, multiverse. There's mathematics to this. This is not, um, this is not imagination. The, the mathematics was forced into it. The mathematics of inflation together with quantum mechanics, combine the two of them together, and it leads to this bubbling, expanding universe. Bubbling means many, many different environments created. So yeah, the equations of Einstein together with the equations of quantum mechanics, which by the way were largely influenced by Einstein, um, led it seems, with no way out, 
to this bubbling, expanding universe with many, many different environments in it. It doesn't seem to be any way out of that mathematics. Um, obviously, that's not something I can explain mathematically to you sitting here. So, you know, again, have to uh, um, accept as a matter of fact that serious, mathematically oriented physicists do have equations which lead to this picture. And when I say do have equations, it's important that there are equations behind these things. It's not enough just to have the imagination of a uh, bubbling universe. It's absolutely essential, not only that there be equations that lead to this, but that your equations that you thought were right in the first place are the ones which lead to this picture. That's really the point. The equations that we thought were right in the first place, the equations of cosmology, together with the equations of quantum mechanics, led, apparently as far as we can tell, with no alternative, to this universe which expands and bubbles and nucleates these different environments. That's where we are.